Everybody loves a rice bowl. So we're putting arguably the two best head to head. Okay, so today is Japanese versus Korean rice bowl. Two cuisines that I have so much love for. They share some similarities, but there's also vast differences, not only in the ingredients, but the flavors, the way they're combined, the way that they're enjoyed. This isn't just about, oh, one is better than the other. This is more so, what do I like more? What do I think the masses are gonna like more? What do I think that the masses are gonna wanna try first? So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Before we get to spanking these bowls out, first we begin with rice. You need two cups of dry, medium, or short grain rice for either of these two recipes. Wash your rice till the water runs clear, drain it, then into a rice cooker because you respect your rice cover with equal parts water. Run that damn thing, rice. Now, once you have rice, it's mostly about toppings. Let's begin with the Japanese rice bowl, katsudon, which is a type of donburi. First, let's make a quick dashi. Get a small sauce pot, add half a cup or 120 milliliters of water, a one inch square of kombu, three tablespoons or two grams of bonito flakes. Heat that just until it reaches a steamy heat. Turn off the heat and let it sit for 15 minutes. Then strain all that out and reserve the liquid. Next, katsu. You need two boneless pork chops, around one inch thick. Pound those out until they're about a half inch thick. And then you need that classic katsu three bowl setup. Three quarters of a cup or 40 grams of panko breadcrumbs. Another one with one cup or 150 grams of all-purpose flour, and the last one with one egg and one tablespoon or 15 grams of water whisked together. Now first season your pork chops generously with salt on both sides, and then to bread, first coat it in the flour thoroughly, shake off the excess, then dip into the egg mixture until fully coated without dry spots because each dry spot is a kick in the shin from Papa. Then finally dip that into the panko to coat each and every crevice, pressing to adhere. Repeat that with all your chops, place on a sheet tray to the side, and well, you're ready to fry. In a heavy bottom pot filled about halfway with vegetable oil, heat that to 350 Fahrenheit, and fry your pork chops two at a time for four to six minutes or until beautifully crisp and golden brown. Now once that's beautifully crisp, golden brown, and the internal temperature is around 155 to 160 Fahrenheit, it's done. Yes, that's closer to medium. You can cook pork to medium. Please relax. Now drain those on a wire rack and immediately season generously with salt to taste and a light sprinkle of shimi tokarashi. All right, we're almost there. Get a nonstick pan, set it over medium heat, add just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom of the pan. Once hot, add half a yellow onion sliced, season to taste with salt, and saute for one minute. Cover with a lid and cook stirring occasionally until just softened, about two to three more minutes. Then add your dashi you just made, one tablespoon or 15 grams of mirin, two and a half tablespoons or 35 grams of shiradashi, which is different and you can buy at most Asian stores, but feel free to omit. One tablespoon or 12 grams of sake, and one tablespoon or 15 grams of soy sauce. Give that a little stir, bring that to a boil, and let it reduce that mixture by half, about three minutes. While that's still simmering, quickly slice your katsu into half inch thick slices, add them to your simmering pan, beat two whole eggs together, and pour that mixture all over your pan and lightly coating your katsu here and there. Top it with the lid and let that cook for one to two more minutes or just until your egg is cooked. We want it tender, but not like a rubber band. Now I know this technique seems odd. We just spent all this time getting the katsu crispy. What are you doing, Josh? Look, although it seems wrong, it creates a brand new texture you wouldn't have any other way. The katsu don is done. Obviously it goes on rice, but before we assemble, let's move on to the classic Korean bibimbap. You got pork belly, mushrooms, garlic spinach, pickled carrots, spicy cucumbers. So for the pork belly, get a medium sized bowl and add two tablespoons or 45 grams of gochujang, one tablespoon or 21 grams of honey, one tablespoon or 15 grams of soy sauce, whisk in one tablespoon or 15 grams of rice vinegar. Then once combined, stir in one finely chopped green onion. Now you'll need two pounds or 900 grams of raw skinless pork belly. Cut that into three inch rectangles, then slice that bad boy into half inch thick planks like these bad boys. Add that to your marinade, let it sit at room temp for 15 minutes, then pop onto a wire rack, set over a sheet tray and into an oven that's been preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes or until cooked through crisp and lightly charred to perfection. Set that to the side and keep it warm. Next, pickled carrots. You need three large carrots, which are ideally nice and girthy. Julienne those bad boys. Place them in a one quart heat proof container. Then in a medium saucepan, add one tablespoon or 18 grams of salt, one tablespoon or 13 grams of granulated sugar, one cup or 240 milliliters of water, one cup or 240 milliliters of rice vinegar, and one red fresno, finely diced. Crank the heat to medium high, and as soon as it comes to a boil, cut off the heat and pour your hot liquid over your carrots to submerge completely. Then all you have to do is let it sit at room temp until room temp and you've got pickles. Wow, good work. Next up, mommy's mushrooms. Two tablespoons or 28 grams of vegetable oil in a 12 inch nonstick skillet set over medium heat. Once that's hot, add half a pound or 227 grams of fresh sliced shiitake mushrooms. Cook those stirring often. And once those are cooked through and starting to pick up some color, about four minutes, cut off the heat and add in one tablespoon or 15 grams of soy sauce. That's it. Next, garlic spinach. Medium saucepan. Heat over medium. Add one tablespoon or 
15 grams of vegetable oil in one tablespoon or 14 grams of toasted sesame oil. Once that's hot, add three cups or 52 grams of fresh spinach. Optionally, add a light sprinkle of toasted sesame seeds. Season to taste with salt. Cook stirring often until the spinach is wilted, then cut off the heat and finish with seven cloves of very finely chopped garlic. Yeah, seven, okay? Stir to incorporate and that's your spinach. Okay, we're on our last thing, spicy cucumbers. Now first slice one large seedless English cucumber about a quarter of an inch thick, mandolin recommended, but at the risk of your own fingy wingy tips. Add those to a bowl, season generously with salt, and let that sit for 10 minutes to draw out the wawa, then drain the excess wawa, rinse with fresh wawa, and drain one more time. Get a small saucepan, add four tablespoons or 56 grams of vegetable oil, heat to 300 Fahrenheit, and then immediately cut the heat. Then in a separate bowl, one green onion, finely chopped, two teaspoons or six grams of gochugaru, two teaspoons or six grams of toasted sesame seeds, three cloves of garlic, finely chopped, one tablespoon or 15 grams of soy sauce, two teaspoons or 10 grams of rice vinegar, one teaspoon or five grams of MSG, mix together till combined, and this is the moment of truth. Stir in your hot oil and let it sit for five minutes. Now, add your cukes and toss till coated, and these go so hard, you'll be happy to make these completely on their own, brother. Okay, we're ready to put these together. First, the katsudon. Get a large bowl, fill it with rice, followed by half your katsudon, a nice layer of green onion, and well, actually, that's it. Bibimbap is a little more involved. Again, bowl, place the rice down. I like to pat it down to create almost like a little table for your ingredients to be laid on. First layer is optional, but frequently used, which is a nice runny fried egg, followed by a few slices of your pork belly, then your cucumbers, pickled carrots, mushrooms, and last but not least, your garlic spinach. Side by side, we have two very different bowls. The bibimbap definitely looks a little bit more exciting because, you know, you got all these colors, textures, but truly I love them both. There's only one way to determine this, the taste test. A little bit of bibimbap sauce, bibimbap, katsudon. First, katsudon. I know what everyone's asking. What about it being soggy? If you make katsudon right, it should still have a little bit of crisp on the top, a little bit of soggy on the bottom. That's the point. This is beauty and simplicity. Let's try this one. So, puncture the egg, mix it around into the rice, a little bit of that. <laughs> if you want the sauce recipe, it's in a separate video. Hey, Kendrick, you don't have your glasses on, or your uh, helmet on. You know what I mean. Don't leave the headphones for that. You can hear that from down the road. If you're working with chopsticks and you got a big piece of meat, good idea to have some scissors off to the side. My left hand is not my dominant hand, as you can see. <laughs> got a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of spinach, a little bit of rice, a little bit of pork. Pick one. Let me consult the culinary gods. Okay, I have my answer. The one that I would pick more times over would be this one. They're both undeniably delicious and both I would be happy with, but I would choose this more often because it's simpler to make, but not less complex in flavor. And that's what I love about it. There's texture flavor in this, but don't get me wrong. If you want more layering and you want more flavors, then this is your answer. But at the end of the day, the choice is yours. So beauty and simplicity, you know? You wanna know what else is beauty and simplicity? B-roll.